Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. Welcome to the Friday, March 11, 2022 Market Plus. Here to join us for more is John Roach. We understand why you uh, didn't want to come to Iowa this week. You're nice and nice and warm down in Florida, huh? Yeah, it's still nice down here, but uh, I look forward to coming up next month. Yeah, well, we look forward to seeing you then. All right, well, during market, uh, market to Market, during the main segment, we didn't get a chance to discuss hogs. They closed on the upside um, this week. Where does the market go from here? We think the hog market moves higher. Uh, the biggest problem that we've had is that uh, meal prices have been high and corn prices high in China, and they've been liquidating their hog herd and putting pork out into the marketplace. Uh, uh, that's been bothering the entire world's uh, pork prices. Uh, we think that uh, that uh, hog, uh, hog prices will move higher and had buy signals actually on them this week. Okay. Well, let's go to social media for a question here. So this is coming from Minnesota. Paul in Minnesota is asking this week, what are John's thoughts on corn basis in both new and old crop? I think um, corn basis is going to be highly variable. It depends on your particular market and it depends on your particular buyer situation. Uh, for most of this year and most of last year, we've had very uh, strong corn basis uh, compared to normal. But the, the cost of hedging corn and, and all the costs associated uh, with, the, with handling corn for your buyer has gone up. Uh, so I expect corn basis to widen a bit uh, as we um, uh, as we have corn come available. But the demand is strong, particularly into the ethanol business. And so if you're if that's where your market uh, is, uh, we could see some narrowing. What we've really uh, talked about with our customers is look carefully at historical basis levels for new crop delivery. And if your if your basis level is is strong relative to history, we'd just as soon fix that basis on a new crop contract rather than do a hedge to arrive. But that's a localized situation where you need to look at history and what's available today for those new crop sales. All right. Well, with everything happening in Ukraine, we really haven't had a chance to talk a lot about weather conditions here in the United States. And the question coming from Roger this week is, are current drought conditions being reflected in the markets with planting season just six weeks away? I think that they are. Um, but we have time, of course, to get moisture. And, and so you, you don't get as excited about those dry conditions until you get a little further along. Uh, but uh, as, as the market to market show uh, covered at the very outset, uh, we have dry conditions across widespread areas of the western part of the country. And that white and that western area comes all the way in uh, past Nebraska, Nebraska and into Iowa. And, and so the uh, uh, the situation is concerning with, with particularly uh, the winter uh, wheat crop, a uh, hard red winter wheat crop, uh, that uh, and the ratings show that. So markets pay close attention to weather during this time of year. So you can bet it's already dialed in, uh, but um, uh, it's not dialed in as much as it will be uh, uh, three or four weeks from now. All right. Well, our next question is about um, something that the government um, could potentially do. We talked about it last week. Is there any truth to the rumors of some CRP acres being released for early planting? If so, how many acres and will it likely go to soybeans? I really don't have any insight on that, Brooke. So I, I don't know. Um, uh, politics are a bit like bizarro world to me these days. And so uh, trying to predict what that people do in Washington is, it, I find it to be very difficult and so, and often doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, but it would make some sense uh, to open up CRP ground uh, uh, if they're concerned about availability of supply. But on the flip side, you have a, a very strong conservation mindset and green mindset um, uh, with the leaders in Washington. So I, I really don't have any more insight uh, as to what what they will do and and i think that if we were to see it opened up we may not see very many new acres actually come into production mm -hmm. all right well ryan in north dakota is asking this question when will wheat start to be priced competitively to corn and beans 
I'm not sure that it uh, will be if you're looking at historical norms. Um, wheat is a crop that's going to uh, uh, continue to have all the excitement surrounding it uh, while we're waiting to see what happens in Ukraine uh, with their winter wheat crop uh, and uh, what happens in the United States with our hard red winter wheat crop and in Canada with the spring wheat crop. And so all of the three areas are important production areas and all three areas are at risk. And uh, uh, whereas the, the corn situation right now is at risk in Brazil, but it's in pretty good shape. Uh, and it's still another month away from being at much risk in the United States. So, so wheat's gonna continue to be a strong market relative to other crops uh, for the next month, I would think. All right, well, we uh, one of our questions earlier was about planting season. Is this a good time for farmers to lock in their feed needs if they haven't already done so? I think that you have to uh, buy feed whenever you get a, a softening in the price. Uh, we have everything up on the top side right now. Uh, we had buy signals in meal two weeks ago, uh, and uh, and we had buy signals in in uh, in the other grains uh, back in February, and uh, or near buy signals. So so we've had sell offs in the market. We'll probably have sell offs even though we have all the excitement going on. And when we do, you need to accumulate feed because you don't want to be running short uh, in this kind of an environment. All right, well, this is a question that kind of impacts everyone, and you hear people talking about it a lot. Gas prices, oil closed uh, just below $110. Where do you think we go from here? I think oil prices stay high. Uh, how high they go, uh, we'll just kind of, we'll have to see. But, but I don't see a softening in oil prices until we see some policy changes. The, the administration is willing to have high-priced energy uh, that's a component of getting us all to move away from energy consumption uh, and reduce energy consumption, reduce petroleum consumption. Uh, it's a plan. And, uh, and all we've had happen is the, the situation in Ukraine. Uh, and, and now we're, we don't, we're not accepting Russian oil. Uh, we're, and and we're going instead to Venezuela and Iran. I mean, it, the 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 policies are all toward high energy prices, and and those were the policies before Russia invaded. So I, I don't see that changing. Okay. Well, well, John, thanks so much for joining us in Market Plus. Good to see you. Thank you very much, Burke. And we are entering the time when public television stations like this one are asking for your support. If you value the work of this program or the station in your area, please consider making a gift of support now. Next week, we take a look at a startup that has made advances in preserving pollen. And Arlen Suderman will join us to analyze the markets. Thanks for watching and have a great week.